All right, this video here is going to help us with a probability problem. And a lot of you uh, students struggle with probability of geometric and binomial probability. So this is the perfect problem to describe um, how geometric and binomial probability works. So we can actually see it in action here. So a state lottery claims that a player has a 15% chance of winning on a certain scratch-off lottery ticket. This outcome is independent from ticket to ticket, which means if he wins on one ticket, it's absolutely not going to affect what happens on the next ticket. Dan is a frequent lottery player who buys many scratch scratch off tickets. First question is what is the probability Dan, Dan wins on a ticket after his second ticket? So if he, we got to first understand what this is. This is a geometric problem here, geometric probability, because we're trying to find his first win and we want to find it after the second ticket. So we got to um, understand here that what after the second ticket means. That means that he wins on the third ticket or maybe the fourth ticket, or maybe the fifth ticket, or maybe the sixth ticket, and again, dot, 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 dot. It says after the second ticket. So as long as he wins after the second ticket, you're finding the answer to this probability problem. So this is basically third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, all the way on up for seemingly ever and ever. So that's going to be pretty tough to, uh, you know, figure out there. So let's just take an example. Let's take a look at what it means to win on the fourth ticket, and then we can understand how we're going to actually solve this problem. To win on the fourth ticket, you need to have success or failures up until that. So that means he had failure being 85%. Again, if, if uh, success is 15% chance of winning, it's an 85% chance of living, losing. So he needed that to happen three times in a row. So the first ticket, second ticket, and third ticket, he lost. So 0.85 to the third. And then finally, on the fourth ticket, he wins. So that's how you calculate the probability of winning on the fourth ticket. But again, this is anything after the second. So we'd have to do that for the third, the fifth, the sixth, and all of them. So that's pretty difficult to do. So the, the way to answer this question and get it right on something that seems like it's going forever and ever is to figure out the probability of him winning on the first or the second ticket and then subtracting that away. Because one represents everything. You know, in dealing with probability, one is 100%, everything. So if we take one and subtract away the probability he wins on the first ticket, or the probability he wins on the second ticket will be left with the probability of him winning on everything else, third, fourth, or fifth, or sixth, or seventh, or eighth. So that's all we got to do, and this is really easy to calculate. So the probability he wins on the first ticket, well, that's easy to figure out. There's a 15% chance he wins on the first ticket. Boom, he won, he's done. Or, plus, he wins on the second ticket. Now, to win on the second ticket, he'd have to fail first, 0.85, and then win on the second ticket. So this is the first ticket, he fails. Second ticket, he wins. This one is the first ticket, he wins, and he's done. So we're going to calculate this probability and get rid of it. So um, if you type this into your calculator, let's see here. 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.85. I take that back, it's 0.15 plus. 0.15 times 0.85, that's what I have written there, is 0.2775. So we would do 1 minus 0.2775. And um, 1 minus 0.2775 is 0.7225. So the probability that Dan wins um, after his second ticket is 72.25%. That was a fairly easy problem. Again, that was what we call geometric um, distribution. Now, this next one here is a little bit different. It says, what is the probability that Dan will win exactly three times in his next 20 tickets? So we want to win exactly three times in the next 20 tickets. So they're kind of telling us our sample size here. He has 20 tickets. Sample size is usually abbreviated at the end there. We want to ex win exactly three times. So what does that look like? Well, that would be... 0.15, that's chance, that's winning, 15% chance of winning. We need it to happen three times. And then obviously, we also have a losing, 0.85, and we would need to lose 17 times. So of the 20 tickets, he needs to win three, lose 17. So that's 15.15 to the third, so that's the three successes. 0.85 to the 17th, that's the 17 failures. However, this can happen in so many different ways. 
Um, he could win on the first three and then lose on the next 17. He can lose on the first 17, happen on the last three. He could win the first two, win the last one. There is so many different possibilities for him to win three. Again, he could win on the first um, ticket, the 10th ticket, and the 16th ticket. But every way that you can think of it, it's all going to be three successes, 17 failures. And multiplication order doesn't matter. So the order I would do it doesn't really matter as long as there's 0.15 to the three of them to the third and 17s or 0.85 to the 17. So we got to figure out how many different ways that can happen. And that's where we have the um, choosing comes in. So we have... 20 tickets and we want to choose three of them to be successful and this number right here is going to calculate the actual number of ways this can happen so on your calculator do a little side note here you do 20 n c r three so this is 20 choose three so type the 21st then the n c r three so that's 20 and this is found under math probability so if you hit the math button slide over to probability and there are 1,000 140 different ways that you could win on three out of 20 tickets. And again, every one of those ways is 0.15 to the third, 0.85 to the 17th. So we got to do all that math. So now you want to type in your calculator 1,140 times 0.15 to the third, 0.85 to the 17th, and you get a probability of 0 0.2428. So there's about a 24.28% chance of um, Dan winning exactly three times in his next 20 tickets. So hopefully that makes sense. And that is a binomial distribution. Binomial because you know two things. Probability of success, 0.15, and you know how many total tickets you had. All right, now the third problem we're going to deal with this, the third and final problem, is Dan will purchase 105 tickets next year. Would you be surprised if he won more than 25 tickets? And um, kind of got cut off there, but it says, would you be surprised if he won more than 25 tickets? And this is a little bit tougher one to think about. So we want to find the probability, because that's what's going to determine. Low probability, I'm surprised. Um, high probability, I'm not really surprised. So we've got to figure out more than 25 tickets. Will he win on more than 25 tickets? So that would be 26 tickets or 27 or 28 or 29 or, or blah, 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 all the way up to 105. So that's a lot of calculations to worry about. So I guess I could think about anything underneath that. So I can do 1 minus the probability that he wins on 25 tickets or less. So if I think about him winning on 25 tickets or less, do 1 minus that, and I'll be left with more than 25 tickets. So this would be like me doing, let's see here. Okay, he wins out of 105 tickets. He wins on none of them. That would be one of the options. Or 125 tickets, he wins on one of them. Or 125 tickets, he wins on two of them. I would have to continue this all the way till 100. Oh, I said 125. It should be 105 tickets. 105 tickets. So I'd have to do this all the way to 105 tickets, and he wins on 25 of them. And then I have to figure all this out. Again, this would be no successes, all failures. This would be one success, all fail or um, 104 failures. This would be two successes, 103 failures, and so forth. Well, that's a lot of work. And the cool thing is, because I realize this is binomial, again, I'm told how many total tickets, and I'm looking for a certain number of successes, I can use my calculator. So I'm going to do 1 minus... This is a binomial CDF, and the C will do a cumulative. And I'm going to tell the calculator there's 105 total trials. Success is 0.15, and I need 25 or fewer. Now, C right here stands for CDF. That will do 25 or anything less, so 25 or 24 or 23 or 1 or 0, all the way down for me. And again, I'm doing 1 minus that, so I'm left with more than 25. So using my calculator to figure that out, you could actually type in 1 minus binomial CDF, or you could do the binomial CDF first and do 1 minus it. But you should get a final answer of 1 minus 0.9. 9403, so that's the probability of winning 25 times or less, and then 1 minus that will be more than 25, so 0 0.005968. So there's a very, very small probability that he wins more than 25 times. We're talking about a half a percent, so very, very rare. So the question says, would you be surprised? Yes, I would be surprised. 
because it's not supposed to happen. I would be surprised because if it's such a low probability of occurring. So that's a um, basic uh, problem that quickly goes through binomial. Here's another binomial of exactly three times, and that's easy to do by hand. And then we also have a geometric probability we're talking about his first success. So hopefully that helps refresh your memory a little bit about um, probability, geometric, and binomial.